And with that, good evening. Hello, welcome to tonight's program, the latest in Phoenixville Public Library's Community Gardening Around the Village series. I'm Mark Pinto with you here at the library and our series uh, this month is now a year old. And a big thank you to our partner organizations, Phoenixville Communities That Care, Phoenixville Recreation Department, Phoenixville Area Transition Living Landscape, Penn State Extension, Camp Hill, Kimberton Hills, Phoenixville Hospital, Trellis for Tomorrow, and the Chester County Food Bank. Thanks all of you for co-presenting. Uh, we're thrilled to have with us tonight local florist Cameron Peters, owner of Phoenixville's Cameron Peters Floral Design. Will show us how to care for and do beautiful things with uh, fresh cut flowers. Uh, you can feel free to unmute yourself during the presentation at any time to ask a question. And with that, hello, welcome Cameron, take it away. Thanks Mark, hi, I'm Cameron Peters and I am the owner of Cameron Peters Floral Design up here on Main Street now. I have to get change my thinking. Um, we were down on Bridge Street for the last four and a half years and we're the ones that just moved up onto Main. Um, so I, I appreciate the invitation of being here with you tonight. I hope at least you can glimmer and take away a thing or two to help you with your flowers. Um, I know that a question came in before it started um, as far as what my training is. And I kind of said that it might, it might surprise you. Um, I don't have any official training, none. Um, I started in the floral industry back in 1993 um, because of a car accident and I started answering the phone. And from there, I started sweeping the floors and <laughs> I learned how to process flowers and the names and kind of worked through every single step um, in, the, in the flower shop that I was at. And then finally, the day after Valentine's Day, of course, because my timing is always impeccable. Um, I asked if I could start learning how to arrange flowers. So um, however many years, that's been now, my goodness, what, 20, almost 28. Um, here I am. <laughs> and <laughs> so this is what you get. So that's my, that's my training. Um, nothing, nothing formal, um, just a whole lot of trial and error and having fun and working in a whole big bunch of different shops. So um, what I wanted to do with you today was actually show you, um, you know, you get a bunch of flowers, you don't know what to do with them. You kind of you kind of take a look at them and you're like, oh, that's really pretty, and I'm going to put them in a vase. So you, that's what you do. But how do you best care for those when you put them in the vase to get them to last the longest for you? What on God's green earth do you do with this thing that comes in? It's a flower food packet. Sorry, my lighting in here is kind of kind of scary. Um, <clears throat> and then what happens if you were to actually step out of the box a little bit when you get those flowers? Um, and I'm talking about a bunch, sorry, not, not like an arrangement that comes to you. Although feel free to deconstruct and reconstruct those as well if you want. Um, but a bunch of flowers that you might get from, you know, a gift from somebody from here that you come in and pick up um, from a local store somewhere, you know, um, so I'm going to show you the difference between pulling it, uh, taking it and putting it just right in the vase and then pulling it apart and putting it back together. All right. Does anybody have any questions so far yet? Feel free to unmute or you can type your question in the chat at any time too and I'll relay that. Okay. So you found your perfect bunch of flowers. You get them home, you have your favorite vase. It's the one that you always use. And you're like, okay, I'm gonna put my flowers in there. Your vase, first of all, should be super clean. Um, you can run it through the dishwasher. Um, that will still leave a potential residue on the glass though. I would suggest cleaning it with like a drop or two of bleach and a little bit of um, dish soap. Just swirl it around in there, use your sponge, make sure you get all the, all the muck off. Any residue that leaves a ring on your vase, um, you'll be able to get it off with that. If you're using grandmother's crystal vase, because that's what you always use, and it's got all those nifty nooks and crannies in there, my suggestion to you is, um, and don't laugh, get some denture cleaner. Um, the denture cleaner will actually 
when it fizzles, like it would fizzle to clean your dentures, um, it will actually fizzle up into all those nooks and crannies in the vase and get it, get it super nice and clean for you. Um, so you've, you've got your vase, you get your water, and now you've found this funky little packet in there. And you, you're like, okay, well, it's flower food. I need to put all of this in my water, but there's actually two different sizes. So you could either get a 10 gram pack, sorry, or a five gram pack. The five gram pack, which is the smaller of the two is good for a pint of water. So all this food would go into a, like a pint size mason jar might be the easiest to, you know, easiest to, to recognize. This 10 gram packet would go into a quart of water. So it's important to actually be using the correct amount of flour food and correct amount of water. Um, you don't want too much food in too little water because that's going to harm your flowers. You would be better off just not even using it. Just give it fresh water, change it every couple of days, recut the stems, you're done. But if you are going to use it, just make sure that you're measuring properly. So I actually have a little bit more, but I, I have more water in here than a pint, but I don't quite have a quart. So I'm not going to um, open up a 10 gram packet just to put the food in here, but I will go ahead and open up the five. Now, if you do get a 10 and you're using a smaller, a 10 gram packet and you're using a smaller jar, feel free to try and just kind of put half in there. And then, um, you know, you've got enough for a, for a water change. So that, that keeps that super easy. Okay, so I've got that in there. Looks like it's it dumped in pretty well, but I need to mix that up a little bit more because I don't want that powder down sitting on the bottom because um, that could potentially burn the ends of the stems. So we'll mix this up. There we go. That looks good. Okay, so I was gonna go buy a bunch of flowers somewhere. And I was like, yeah. I'll make my own. So I put together a bunch of flowers that just about looks like you might get them at a, at a even here. Um, mine would have a little bit more going on to it though, as far as design goes. But it has a nice assortment of some fall stuff. You've got some roses and some sunflowers, um, some liatris, a couple hydrangea some carnations, a little bit of pampas grass here, some little button palms. Oh, look, some berries are tucked in there. Um, and you know what, for, for a lot of people, this looks pretty darn good and they're super happy to have this. And they are just going to take their bunch, take their vase, and then they're gonna actually potentially hold their bunch up to the vase and go, okay, I need to cut it here. And what's the next thing that they do? Scissors out of the kitchen drawer. No, 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 no. These are the scissors that you probably use for clipping open a bag or, um, you know, cutting up paper, um, you know, clipping off the bottom. If you've got kids or if you're sending something back with a bill, you're clipping this off and you're using it. Um, just about on absolutely everything, which means that these scissors are not as sharp as they should be for your flowers. You really want something that's dedicated for your flowers that's sharp. So I would suggest either having, you can buy like little pairs of pruners at Lowe's. Um, you can buy flower scissors. I do have a few pairs here left. I think I have to get more, um, but they're actually made just for you know, dealing with your flowers. If you're taking your garden pruners, if you use them to hack up the boxwood bush out front, they again, probably are not as sharp. And if you have any pitting going on on your, on your blade, you don't wanna use those. Um, but if, you, if they are fairly new and you've you know, used them in the garden and you wanna use them on your flowers, go ahead as long as they're not pitted, but you need to sterilize them first. You don't wanna cross contaminate from your um, bushes outside to your flowers inside because there could be some diseases on there that aren't harming the plant in any way, but they're not going to play nicely with your flowers. Okay. So you've got your, now you're set. You got your water, you got your food, you got your flowers, and you got your clippers. So oh, Cameron, gonna... a question, question yeah. about the uh, water. Someone's asking, is it warm water? No, just 
just water that's coming out of your tap. Um, if, okay, if you want them to open up faster, then yeah, like if you bring them home and they're a little closed and you need them open for dinner tonight or brunch tomorrow, um, then yeah, you can put them in a little bit warmer water, but the key is not to do, you don't want to do too warm, um, <clears throat> only because that's going to promote bacterial growth. The food is there to help prevent that, but you don't, you don't want to do anything intentionally to make them, um, you know, to make that bacteria grow any faster. So, you, oh, I see that sterilized clippers. Um, so again, a little bit of, a little bit of cleaning with a, with a, with a dish brush, you can use, um, you know, just a couple drops of bleach in some water. Um, just let them, excuse me, use the, use the brush or even like an old toothbrush is fine. You know, give it a scrub and then either let it dry naturally and they'll be fine. Or you can, um, you know, rinse them off and then, excuse me, and then dry them and then be able to use them. Just be careful. Okay. Um, <clears throat> usually I will suggest, and I, I use it all the time. I will generally suggest using the, a paring knife um, that's in your, your knife set. Cause usually it's the, on average, it's the least used knife, unless you like a whole lot of summer cocktails and you're cutting up limes and lemons all year. But, um, you know, for, for most people, they're going, they will be grabbing like a pair of pruners or a pair of scissors. I would just say no scissors, but pruners, yes, you're good. Um, anything? No, I think we're good. Okay, so we've got our flowers and I'm going to go ahead and cut. So you're going to end up take, and I, I hope you can see this. Um, and here we go. We're cutting them. This is going to be the right length, right? Straight across. Yes. No, no, no. Now they're, now they're straight. Can you see that? Now they're pretty, pretty straight. So when I put them in this vase, they're going to sit right on the bottom. The idea here is that you want to give them, when you cut them, just a little bit of an angle. Think of your flower stem as a drinking straw. So if you put your straw flat on the bait, uh, flat on the bottom, you're not going to get anything up. Your cheeks are going to go in when you try to get liquid up. But if you have your, can you, yeah, this lighting really stinks. I'm sorry, guys. Um, hopefully you can see that, but yeah, that's actually sure. cut on an angle when I put it in the bucket. So here, because it's on an angle, my, the, the flower straw, it, unless it's in there like that, is really never going to hit the bottom completely. So it has plenty of room to be able to intake water through all of the veins that run up the run up the stem. So always try to cut them on a little bit of an angle. They're gonna be happy for it, especially your hydrangeas. Um, your hydrangeas should love you for that, for putting it, um, you know, giving them a little bit of an angle. So there we go. That looks pretty, huh? Let me pull this down a little bit. I have to do it up just to make it, but not bad. You know, we we got our bunch and put it in, and and it it does look. I mean, I have to admit, it does it doesn't look too bad. Um, you know, it's not because I did it either, honest. Um, but yeah, a little a little finagling and you know pushing some stuff in, and that looks pretty good. But we can make it look better. So I am going to show you. Same vase, same flowers, but I didn't bundle them up this time. So just to make it easier for, for me versus clipping them apart. Um, but yeah, see, same vase, we're back again. I'm gonna dump the same packet of food in there because we figured out that five grams is perfect for that. So we're gonna dump this in, okay. I think I might have time to be able to show you something else too, which would be pretty cool. This one's a, it's a fun one. Um, I didn't soak any foam, but most certainly we can work around it. Um, okay, so here's all of my flowers that were in the last bunch. Same, same selection. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to take a look at the flowers that I have. And there are some, I'm turning you. There are some hydrangea here. 
which are super, you know, they, they're, they're great. They're a great filler. They're beautiful. Um, you know, they, they kind of are, are space taker um, and they're, they're big. Okay. And then we have the sunflowers, which are next. They're not quite as big as our hydrangea, but they're, they're a decent size for a sunflower. They're a mini. Um, and they're another, another focal flower. Okay. And then we have some roses. I put, put a couple roses in there. So we've got a couple, couple red roses. Um, these would be the next size down. Um, and then we have some carnations, which here are, they're being used as a filler, not so much as a focal flower. Um, and then I also have some liatris here, which is, which is kind of fun for purple. It's purple and fuzzy, but this is, this is what would be called a spike because it's a, a straight aligned flower. Um, so this is kind of what gives, can give you a little bit of height fairly easily. Um, and then what else do we have in here? What other goodies? Some Alstroemeria, which is fun. There's those. And some little, some little thistles, some little blue thistles. And they were in the other one, but you couldn't see them because I just cut it and put it in, but they are actually in there. And that's, that's kind of my point is that you can lose some, you can lose some pretty fun stuff, but in this one, it's right here. Wait, there we go, right there. So I'm going to start out with my big fluffy flowers. So we're gonna start out with the hydrangea and I am going to take one and I'll take off some of these leaves cause you don't need necessarily need all of them and we'll cut it on an angle and put it in the water. And you're gonna lose my head here because I have to have this so tall so you can see it. And I will show you with the other one, I'm gonna use the clippers so that way um, you can see that it'll do the same thing. So I'm gonna use the clippers, okay? I'm left-handed too, so everything I do is backwards for everyone. I'm gonna cut it on an angle and I'll put it in the water. So now we have them, eh? okay. I'm sorry, guys. I, I wanna be able to see you. We'll try this box. There we go. That'll work. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. Um, so now that we have our hydrangeas in there, we'll go to the next, the next largest, which would be the sunflowers. Um, and I, I think actually, we'll put them. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll leave these a little taller. Yeah, we'll leave these a little taller. I do a lot of talking to myself too. So if you wander in here and this is like what you see over here, this is me on a normal day. So don't worry about it. I'm having a staff meeting. Okay, so we'll pull this one in and I am gonna, there we go. This is the height I wanted this one, but I'll show you, we'll be able to pull it up. Okay, so now we're kind of starting to create a shape. I don't want it so mounded as the one that we just cut and put into the base. I want to add a little bit of style to it. So we've got some stuff coming up that will make that easier to do. So next, I'm going to get my liatris, which is my line flower. And that those were in there kind of just poking out of your bunch, to, out of the bunch together in a, in a group. So we'll put one here. And this is, again, this might, I may have just cut that a little short. I wouldn't be surprised. No, that'll work. And then this one will leave a little longer, hopefully. Yes, there we go. Okay, so now we're getting some, we're starting to get a little bit of dimension to this because we're pulling things apart and putting them back together and placing them intentionally. They're not just like coming down a conveyor belt, which a lot of those mass produced bunches are. They're coming down a belt and the, the people are just grabbing, the people who are assembling are just either laying right on top as it comes past them. Like their job is, is Alstroemeria. They put two on there, two on there um, all day. Um, these, this, this will enable you to, 
to really be able to customize what was mass produced. What are the spongy things that come in floral arrangements? Okay, I'm happening to catch some of these questions, even if it's a little delayed. The spongy thing that you are referring to is going to be Oasis. And it holds water. Here. There we go. It's actually floral foam. Um, it's in there to hold water. A lot of places will soak it with um, flower food. Um, this, the, the kind that I buy already has it in there. I try not to use a whole lot of foam. Um, it's really not very eco-friendly. Um, there's some new products that are coming out made of agrawool, which some florists are raving about, others are cringing about. And me, I just hear the word wool and I don't wanna itch. So um, I'm waiting for, for a little bit more information on that. I, I do my best not to use a whole lot of foam, um, but when, when you do get something in foam, you wanna make sure that you keep that arrangement watered. Um, or if you are, excuse me, if you're using foam, you wanna make sure that you, you soak it for at least an hour to an hour and a half before you use it. Um, and you don't wanna jam it down into the water. You want to let that, let that brick of oasis or the piece of oasis that you cut for your for your for your container just let that kind of settle itself down into the water and then soak you'll see little bubbles coming up um, that's just going to ensure that you don't have any air pockets in there um, as it's soaking and when you do make something in it you want to make sure that you're pretty sure that that's where you want your stem to go so when you go to put it into the foam you want to put it in there and don't move it. Don't pull it back out. Um, you know, don't adjust it in any way unless you're actually putting it in further. Because again, if you do that, you're going to, if you put it in the foam and then pull it out, you're potentially leaving, you know, some room in that, in that insertion that you just made. And then the stem's not actually touching the foam. So there's too much distance there and it won't get any water. So it can be a little, a little tricky, but it's, I mean, it's good. Most traditionally like centerpieces, um, basket arrangements, those types of things will, will have the foam. I have, a, I have a tendency to send a whole lot out in glass just cause it's, you know, um, it's a little bit more eco-friendly. I try to be cognizant of, of that. Um, okay. So getting back to the arrangement and I'll keep my eye out for, for any more questions. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I realized I didn't give myself any pam pampas grass. Um, I'm going to put my alstroemeria in. Um, this has some funky little leaves here, so I'm going to take them off. Um, if any of the ones up here don't look so good, um, you can take them off. It's not going to harm them in any way. Um, I, you might like the look or you might, you know, of the extra leaves up here, or you might not. It's, it's, that's a personal preference. Um, kind of depends on my mood. You just want to make sure that if you if you do leave them on, that they're not in the water because that's also going to cause bacterial growth pretty quick. Okay, so let's see. I think we'll put this here. And again, I'm going to strip the stem. This is really this is interest. This is an interesting perspective for me. Just as a side note to do it this way, because I've, I've done a few Zoom classes and everybody has the flowers with them already and we're all kind of working together. So this is the first time I've done like, like a demonstration like this, I guess would be the, where not everybody's working together. We're just, I'm on my own. Cause I enjoy seeing everybody's creations. Um, I think that that's super fun. Okay, so I just used, well, trying to, and it doesn't seem to be working yet, but I'm trying to use my alstrom area here to make this stand up a little bit taller and it doesn't want to yet. So we'll revisit that in a minute. Um, okay, how about we do roses? So again, I'm gonna take off any of the, any of the leaves that are, are under the water. Um, these petals don't look too bad. I have a tendency to leave petals on if they don't look 
completely awful only because they're there to help the roads open. Um, too many people peel, 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 and then there's really nothing left to the rows. Um, so the, the more that you can leave on, actually the better off it is for the flower. And um, at the same time, I am very particular with, with what I buy for the shop um, now that I have the, <laughs> now that I can um, be p picky in my, in my own way. So over, over my years, I've kind of learned which growers I like things to come from. And after I opened the shop, in 2017, I started working with my salesperson and he introduced me to roses that were coming out of Ecuador. And I have to say that they're a little bit more expensive than what's coming out of Colombia, but the size of the, of the roses and the, the way that they open and the colors are just, I can't, you know, I, I can't say enough good things about them. So I, that's, I choose to carry Ecuadorian roses. So if you follow me on Facebook and you ever see me post anything about, you know, there's, there's an issue getting this or, you know, due to the, due to the weather in Ecuador, um, you know, I'm just sharing with you that I'm having an issue right now getting something. And, um, you know, that's, that's why I won't, I won't deviate. So, um, you know, I just, I value the quality that's, that's coming out of there for, or here, and I, I don't have any issues saying that they're a little bit more, but you're gonna get a whole lot more out of them. So that's my spiel on my roses. Um, okay, so we'll put the other rose in. I took off a few because they were kind of looking gross. I wanna tuck this guy in here. Where did it go? What's that? You're still there. Okay. I literally just lost everything. So I have no idea what, what just happened on my end. But as long as you guys can see me, then we're good. I just can't see anything at this point. It put me into a, into like a post attendee thing. Um, so let's see here. I'm going to do the carnations next. And I have three in this bunch. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one in the middle and then I'll do two on the sides. I work a whole lot here uh, in, sorry, I thought I was gonna sneeze. Um, I work a whole lot here in even numbers, which is unusual because I've, I've spent many, many, many years in my career where I, you know, an arrangement had five of this and three of this and, um, you know, I, I just kind of like the evens. So um, every once in a while, I'll throw an odd. Sorry, fire truck, if you can hear that. Um, busy corner here, we have, <laughs> there's a lot going on. All right, so here I put the one carnation in here right under my rose. I'm gonna come over here and put it next. I'm not gonna put it under my rose this time. I'm gonna put it right next to my sunflower. Can, I hope you guys can see that because here again, Zoom is, is being silly on my end. Um, so there's that part. And then we have some berries. These were in the, in the bunch too, but they were, they were stuck down in the middle. So you couldn't even really see that they were there. So I have my berries. So we'll put these in Oops. and I'm just going to use these kind of like as a filler. So I'm going to look and see if there's a hole anywhere that I want to fill in like right here. I want to put something here so that way there's some interest and let's see, I think we'll put another one up top. Yeah, that'll work. So I actually, it's going to be hard to show you without like having a camera that would, that would get down on the angle, but I actually have two that I put towards the middle, but I cut them a little shorter. So they kind of are sitting down a little lower. So that way, when you look 
no matter which way you look at the vase, you're going to catch something, but it's going to be in. Um, kind of same theory. Same theory when it's like a Christmas tree with Christmas lights. Um, if you put some of the lights in and some of the lights out on your tree, you're going to get that in and in and out like multi-dimensional look, which is what we just did, which is what I just did here with the berries. Um, and then let's see. Oh, pampas grass. I forgot to put that in my bucket. Okay, so here we go. This stuff is so much fun. Um, available in the fall. Super popular, especially with brides right now, but I've just been having so much fun popping it into arrangements. And it gives it, it gives it a little bit of movement that you wouldn't really normally find. So it's super fun. Looks like a little firework to me. Um, so we'll put one there. We'll put one over here. Because why not? Right. So see now we've got some little bit of movement going on in there. That's sitting there. There we go. Okay, now we have our our um, little bronze palms, and this this stem actually has a whole lot of long laterals on it, which is amazing because you don't always get that. Um, I would probably pull some of these off and use them separately versus just like cutting the whole stem and sticking it in there. So you know, I can take a little group of four or five of them and use them to come in and we'll stick a couple here just because they're cute, right? There we go. And that's gonna fill in that little hole. And then hmm, might be able to actually cut this in two pieces. And you, you shouldn't be afraid to kind of chop them up a little bit, your stems. So like, I'm looking at this stem here, excuse the leaves and I can actually come right in and either cut it right here or right here and get two pieces out of this. So I think I'm going to come in and cut it here. Yeah, maybe I'll go a little lower. We'll cut it here. So that's gonna give me this piece and this piece to work with. So they're gonna go further for me. This one though, because it is shorter and I just broke one. Um, I'm gonna put this towards the edge of the base. So we'll come here and we'll stick this in here like this. So that's gonna fill in that little spot. And then this guy, I can, or girl, I can come in and put this up here. Oh, there we go. Now I was just able to pop my carnation up. I don't know if you just saw me yank it up, um, but there's enough in here now that I can get things to kind of start doing what I wanted them to do to the beginning. And, didn't do it. Okay. My actress will stand up now. Come on. Yep. There we go. So see, I've got one here, got one here. It's a little taller, just kind of gives you a little bit more height. Um, what are we doing? Oh, I'm actually managing to talk a whole lot more than I thought I would. Um, Okay, and we're going to do the same thing with this stem. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to pull off some of the long ones at the bottom and I'll clump them together to almost make it look like it's a stem. Again, I'll cut them scissors or, or not scissors, uh, pruners or, um, you know, carrying knife. If you do try to knife though, please do it away from you so you don't have any problems. We don't need anybody going in the emergency room. I don't think they only, uh, Phoenixville Hospital would like me for that one. Um, and then again, I'm gonna divide this one here in the middle and we'll use two pieces. So I'm gonna put another tall piece on the other side just to kind of balance it out. Okay. And then let's see. I don't even know if I want this one. Yeah. Yeah, we'll put it in here. Sorry. This, you're watching me just do, you know, think. So yeah, we'll put this here. Okay. So now we've just about got everything in here. I'm going to take this leaf off. It's bothering me. Sorry. It's just too big. This one's too big. There we go. 
Now we have something that's a little bit more custom and I still have to put those thistles in here. So we'll get those. And here's the thistles. So let's see. One here, just used one here to kind of fill in the space a little bit. Put that there. And then put another one on the other side just for a little bit of balance. Um, not everything has to be super symmetrical, but you know, just visually, if you see something over here, it's kind of nice to see something over there. So we'll put one over here. Pull those berries out a little bit. And then I've got two more. Um, so I think we'll just put them a little lower towards the edge. So that way you got a little bit of that fun texture, excuse me, right down, right down here. So we'll put one there. You can see it. If you're sitting at the table, if this is on your, you know, on your breakfast bar. And then we'll put the other one over here just to fill it in. Okay. And I think that was it. I think that's all that was in our original bunch. That's all that I have left in my bucket. Um, I did put a couple pieces of greens in there if I needed them, but I didn't, I didn't use any greens here. Um, I just used what was in that, in that bunch that I made. So let me pop the one up and I can show you the difference between deconstructing a bunch um, and just chopping and dropping. As Okay, it's almost like a the difference between a uh, I don't know, like a like a store bought something and a semi homemade. You know, you didn't you didn't do it all, but you did a bulk of it. Okay, so here's I hope you guys can see this. This is without my view, um, it makes it. Fun. So this is the one that we chopped and dropped, okay? And then this is the one that was just made. There's a question uh, came in, yeah. is, it, is it bad for the flowers to keep them confined in the rubber band as in the first bunch? Mm, no, no, not necessarily. Um, I, I actually, I tied that with a piece of twine um, just to tie it off and, and that, that's fine. You don't have to take them out of there if you don't want to. Um, most certainly if, if you do, you know, it's a matter of if you feel more comfortable cutting your flowers to the height that you want them for your vase, if you're gonna leave them bunched. Um, if you wanna use that as to, to hold them all together, um, then most certainly, you know, go ahead and do that. And then you can actually, after you get them cut to where you want them, you can actually come back in and just cut that right off and put them back in. Take it off and put them back in. It's really not changing. You know, it's not gonna change much cause you already cut them and they're already in that, um, you know, in that, in that shape. There. Anything else? And I kind of want to make sure that you guys, you know, any flower questions in general or something else you'd like to see or. Uh, yep, one came in. How often should we change the water? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, you should be changing your water every couple of days. So on average, like every two or three days, just kind of take a look. Um, if you run your house a little bit cooler, um, in general, you're going to get a little bit longer out of them than if your house is on, a, you know, a little bit of a warmer side. Um, your water won't get as, I said funky. Um, it won't get so funky um, if it's not necessarily near a window. Um, you know, if it's if it's on a table that's away from a from a window, they don't need sun because they're, you know, let's be honest, they're dead. Um, we're en we're enjoying the last the last the last bits of them. Um, 
so yeah, you, you'll be able to, by using a clear vase, you'll be able to see your water. Um, but on average, about every two or three days, it's good to dump the water, grab, you know, grab your flowers out of the vase. You might need two hands. I, I get my husband to help me sometimes. Grab your, your flowers out of the vase, dump the water, replace the water. If you have another packet of food, go ahead and put that in. And then at that point, you want to give everybody a little bit of a fresh cup. So it's better to leave them a little taller when you first put them in, only knowing that you're going to adjust them again, or you can find, um, you know, a slightly shorter base if you want. Give them all a clip, put them back in. Now, you know, eventually, depending on, on, on your care level and the, the quality and the freshness of what you bought to begin with, um, over the course of maybe one or two water changes, you're gonna see some things are starting to go. That's when, feel free to go ahead and pull those things out. Um, you might not have to really fuss with them too much at that point, but if we were to, let's say if the roses were the first to go, okay? So we'll pull those out of the, we'll pull those out of the bunch. Now this still actually looks, you know, pretty good. I mean, you're missing your roses, but you can always say, okay, well, I'm missing my roses. I kind of like that color there. So I'm going to move this here, right? And now you just filled in a hole because we actually had a super big clump of them right in the middle. Um, and then, you know, as it progresses, you can keep pulling stuff out or you can just kind of give up on this phase and start pulling out. Maybe you've got some cute little bottles um, or, you know, some little, little tiny drinking glasses that, um, you know, that you think they might look cute and you can put a couple stems in there and, and stick them about. So um, just about anything, as long as it holds water is a good flower base. Um, so, yeah, but you can, you can. A couple more mm -hmm. questions, Kaden. Um, yeah. About dahlias, do you have any advice for keeping them healthy in vases? Oh, that's a good one. Um, they seem to do better with plain water versus any type of flower food. Um, are, and I, I, I would ask, are they talking about dahlias from the garden or commercially grown dahlias? Uh, they say I've been growing a lot of plants that I've been, uh, been growing for cut flowers, but they go bad quickly. Okay. Yeah. Dahlias right. are not one of those long lasting flowers to begin with. Um, you know, you, the showier and smelly, and I'm, I'm, I'm using the word smelly in, in a good way. The scent, the more scented a flower is the less vase life or longevity it has. Um, dahlias are one of those things that they've got the, they've got the hollow tube, um, you know, the hollow stem. So they really, they're, they, they can be a little picky. I have some here from, I'm going to squeeze, maybe not. Yeah. I have some here from um, Foxfield Farm. Um, they called me on Friday. That's the, the, the farm that, that Camp Hill so team works, you know, they, they work on the, on the farm there. And, um, I went and picked up a whole slew of dahlias. I didn't put them in any flower food. I don't have a cooler here. Um, so they're not under refrigeration or, or anything like that. And they are actually, they're still doing pretty good. Um, I'll, I'll show you. Um, let's see. And, and, and here you go. There's a, there are a couple that are like crispy and, but these stems are super short and it doesn't even look like this one got in the water. Um, but you know, the ones that are in the water, they're doing okay. Um, they were just cut out of the, out of the field Friday too. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Okay. We've got, we're at four days now. Um, you know, it, it really comes down to, is your container clean? Um, did you give it a nice, you know, a, a good cut with, with a sharp instrument um, that's not cross-contaminated with, with anything else. You know, those, the, it's the basics that are gonna help you enjoy them the longest. Um, so 
hopefully try that your next your next clipping round you probably have maybe one or two clippings before the, the frost really hits them um so you know you'll have to please i'm not quite sure who asked that question but check back in and let me know if if any of those tips helped or or not she says thank you and uh, another question she has is there a good homemade alternative to flower food yeah um okay so basically the flower food is a little bit of an antibacterial and it's sugar right um antibacterial to help keep your water look nice because you don't want cloudy mucky brown water and the sugar is really like um you know and we all we, including myself if you if you can't notice um we all you know we all live on a little bit of a little bit of sugar or a lot of sugar in our diet so um you know the the what you can do is you can actually just take like but you have to be careful um a drop and I mean, a drop of bleach is going to act like the antibacterial. And then, you know, a couple, a couple tips of some, some seven up, uh, lemon lime soda, um, that'll do it. Um, it'll mix in, it'll all be clear. You don't have to worry about it. Um, and a lot of people have, I, you know, I've read things over the years, like put an aspirin in the water, like a baby aspirin. Um, they don't have a headache. So that's, that's not going to do a whole lot for them. Um, it's, it's really because the baby aspirin may have a little bit of sugar, but it's definitely not going to have the antibacterial in it. Um, so that would be my best suggestion. If you don't have it and you don't have that, those things to make it yourself, don't bother. Just plain water is, is fine. Okay. What type of flour should not be placed in a vase together? Okay, so the one flower that I can tell you certainly does not like to play well with others on the playground and absolutely must be on their own is daffodils. Um, Narcissus have a tendency to leak a, a syrupy sap. Um, it's a little sticky, it's definitely clear so you can't see it, but what that syrupy sappy stuff does is it clogs other flower stems. Um, so, our, our friends, the daffodils, who are so bright and shiny in the spring, um, would really prefer to be on their own. Um, paper whites, the same way, because they're in the nurse, they are in the narcissist family. Um, other than that, euphorbias would probably, euphorbias you can use. Um, so something like a, um, like a, even like a poinsettia, believe it or not, that's in the euphorbia family. Anything that's going to milk. Uh, leak that milky substance when you cut it. Um, but be careful if you have a latex allergy because that's actually, um, it's, it's part of, it's in the latex family. So you, you really need to, need to watch it with, with those types of things. Um, if you have an allergy or if you know somebody that has an allergy, don't go giving them a poinsettia. Um, but those you would actually burn. Um, you would burn the end of the stem with a, with a lighter um, it will uh, cauterize the, the, the sap from, from coming out. Um, that flower can actually handle being, being burned and be okay. Um, so can any of the, any, any of the other euphorbias. Um, so like Alcyclipsis and, um, you know, a few, a few of those guys, you can, you can definitely give them a little, a little singe on the end and that'll, that'll, for lack of, better term kind of scab them over and then you can just put them right in and they'll be fine they won't leak their they won't leak their sap into the water and harm anything else anything else for Cameron feel free to unmute or put your question in the chat Uh, will you do a class in person soon? Absolutely. Yes, we are. Um, if you have not been into our new space yet, please feel free to, <coughs> sorry, I got my flu shot this afternoon. So now my nose is running. Um, please feel free to pop in and, and take a look. We have, we have a dedicated classroom slash workshop. 
Um, that turned for grand opening, that turned into the closet that most of us have at home when neighbors come or when company comes, everything goes in that closet and you're like, don't open the door. Um, so we're working on getting that cleaned up and um, I will be posting hopefully by the end of the week, although we've got Phoenixville's homecoming. So it's getting a little bit busy, which I'm, I'm super thrilled about. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping to get at least a preliminary schedule out there with the first few classes um, out by the end of the week. Um, they should be starting at the beginning of November. We, I try not to do anything around a holiday. So my last thing, I'll probably do two in November. And then my third for November will be on the 17th. We're doing an easy entertaining night. Um, so you don't need to register. There's no cost, but we've got um, Sherry from... Churchy's Gourmet Foods coming. Um, Churchy's is located right here in Chester Springs. Um, so there are lo local version of something like Stonewall, you know, comparable to like Stonewall Kitchen. Um, but there are our super local version of that. Um, Sherry's going to come and do some quick, easy appetizers and stuff like that. And then we're teaming up with um, Wendy and Megan from Bellhaven to do some quick and easy tablescape um, type things. So yeah, we've, we've, we've got, I've got a whole lot of ideas. It's just a matter of getting them from, from brain to paper. And, uh, yeah, so check it, you know, if you don't follow, if you're on social media and, um, you don't follow us yet, feel free to give us a follow either on Facebook or Instagram. Um, it's on Facebook. It's just the full name of the business. So it's Cameron Peters floral design. Um, and I will be posting the information on there as soon as I can get it together, along with a link to be able to sign up. Okay, and then someone else has asked, and I was going to ask you the same thing, can you talk about your shop? Do you sell floral supplies, floral foam, knives, etc., floral bunches, or is everything prearranged? Oh, no. So um, if I could, if I trusted what sorry if i trusted what you could see right now i would i would take you on a quick little tour but over here to my left um is actually a flower bar um so we started that back when we opened um in 2017 and we can we continue it up here so you can actually come in the shop everything is priced by the stem um like i said before i don't have a cooler so nothing's you know at least we don't right now we're talking about possibly putting in a cool bot downstairs next year. Um, but for now, everything is, is out. So you can see it. I have, uh, you know, generally I'll get like two or three deliveries a week easy. So, um, I keep every, I keep everything turning. Uh, I don't want anything sitting cause I want to make sure that you get the best life out of it. So you can come in and, and pick a few stems or you can get a whole bunch. You can do it yourself. We can do it for you, whatever you want. So it's not just prearranged stuff that's going out the door. Um, we've got, I have vases for sale. I have containers for sale. I don't have, um, like bricks of Oasis just sitting out because in my experience, and I would be happy to ruin one. Um, but in my experience, a kid will get a hold of it. And because it is squishy, they'll just start squishing it. So I keep that, <laughs> I keep that hidden. But if you, if you are looking for it, most certainly I just ask, um, I do have the flower scissors. Knives, I haven't quite built up the confidence to sell yet because they're sharp. And I, you know, I would feel bad if somebody were to cut themselves. So, um, but the, but the clippers, um, scissors, yes, I have uh, cans of plant shine here. So if you are making, um, you know, anything at home with, with greens and you want it to look a little bit shinier, or if you've got some plants that you don't feel like taking the time and dusting every single leaf, um, you know, you can, you can shine them up with that. And uh, we also have a plant bar in here too. So we have, um, you know, we've got plants, we've got pots and I've got a couple potting benches. So you can actually come in here, buy your plant, buy your pot and repot it right here in the shop and take it home done. So, um, you know, we've got some pretty nifty stuff in, up in here now that we have the space to do it. And for those of, uh, who don't know, where is your store located? <laughs> We're located at 34, well, I say South Main, apparently the borough, according to the borough, it's just Main Street now, um, but 34 South Main Street. So we're right at the corner of Main and Church. We're right next to Brown's Cow across from Charlotte Thomas and the Historical Society. Um, 
and we are, you know, we we take up that that corner space. So, um, you know, if if you remember a few years back when Jimmy Mac Realty was in here, that's the space that we're in now, and we are so excited to be up up here and be a part of the Main Street family. Yep, glad to have you in the neighborhood, a little closer <laughs> to the library. <laughs> yes, exactly. Anyone else for Cameron? Someone commented the new story is so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we we feel really honored to be able to be the ones to bring this the, to bring this corner back to to life a little bit on this side of the street. Charlotte Thomas did a great job on on their side, and, and uh, you know we're we're thrilled to have done done our part on this side. So thank you. I don't see anything else coming in. And so Cameron, thanks so much for tonight. This, this was uh, great. Absolutely, my pleasure. And, and anybody that, that is uh, that did attend, if you if you have any questions, just please feel to reach out. Okay. Somebody wants to see the vases side by side again. Oh, okay. So hopefully, you can see them side by side. If not, I'll do one then the other. But this you know. was. But we've been able to see just about everything. So. Okay. This is the the chop. Can you see those? Yep. So one's a little bit short and squatty. One's a little bit um, more open and open and airy. But I wanted to make sure I used the same base just to show. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to invite everyone to the next uh, program in the Community Gardening Around the Village series uh, on Monday, November 29th at 7. We will have Idila Kunampio, the backyard orchardist, and uh, his program is How to Start a Food Forest in Any Space. So you can feel free to sign up on the library's website. That's Monday, November 29th. And the comment, uh, the arranged one looks more natural. <laughs> that was the goal. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Great. Thanks again, Cameron. Good night, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.